Hey guys, Perry here, and I have got your review of the Glass Castle. So you might know I am a pretty big fan of Short Term 12, so I've really been awaiting director Destin Daniel Cretton's next movie since that one came out way back in 2013. Cretton set a pretty damn high bar for himself with that one, and while the Glass Castle doesn't exactly hit that same level, it's still a rock solid film, and it continues to prove that he is a director well worth keeping an eye on right now. So this new movie he's got is based on a memoir by Jeanette Walls, and it basically tells her family's true story, living in poverty as they move from house to house throughout her childhood. Brie Larson stars as the adult version of Jeanette, who ultimately settles down in New York City, and she plans to marry a really wealthy man working in the finance industry, while her parents, who are played by Woody Harrelson and Naomi Watts, they prefer to continue to dig through trash and squat in an abandoned building downtown. It's a pretty wild and fascinating true story, and while the film does lose a little bit of steam at the beginning, jumping back and forth between the younger and older versions of Jeanette, eventually the glass castle really does find a groove and all of the time jumps start to build towards a really explosive and powerful ending. And the success of that ending also really speaks to how talented Larson and Harrelson are. So Larson had a little bit working against her in the first half of the movie. When we first meet young Jeanette, she is bubbly, playful, full of energy, whereas Larson's version of Jeanette, the adult Jeanette, kinda comes across like a robot. She wears the finest clothing, articulates everything perfectly, and she comes across like she would have run with that wealthy crowd her entire life. So the difference between the two is just so, so drastic that it's hard not to kind of roll your eyes and think, oh, I see where this is going. And even though the story does go exactly there, Larson and Cretton wind up earning it the more time you spend with the Walls family. Harrelson's character is kind of the exact opposite, though. He is really consistent, and it's sometimes to a fault. At the end of the movie, you're treated to some old photos and footage of the real Walls family, and it's pretty damn incredible how close Harris Harrelson comes to the real Rex Walls, but of course, matching him perfectly is not what it's about. His performance has to work within the movie version of this family story, and it does, but Rex is a pretty difficult character to accept. He flip-flops between loving, warm, protective father to a dangerous, raging alcoholic. And even when he does land in an in-between realm between the two, he might have good intentions, but his parenting methods are really scary. And it can get kind of frustrating to watch, but similarly to how the time jumping pays off, so does Rex's behavior. The family gets really fed up, and when that happens, you're right there with them. But on the other hand, you also truly understand why they still love him so much. Harrelson has so much chemistry with everyone in this movie, but I'd say the highlight is probably his on-screen connection with the actresses that play the two younger Jeanettes. Their names are Ella, An Ella Anderson and Chandler Head. They are both fantastic, and Anderson in particular does just as much heavy lifting in The Glass Castle as Larson does when it comes to leaving you in a place that lets you feel like you fully understand Jeanette and also her decisions, and then you can also have a little something to take away from the experience for yourself. And of course, Naomi Watts is also in the movie, and she is totally fine as Jeanette's mother. She just doesn't make as big of an impression. Now let's move over, though, to a few things that didn't quite work for me. And right there, I've got Max Greenfield, who plays David, Jeanette's New York City fiancé. So whereas Larson, Anderson, and Head get the chance to earn Jeanette's transition, David is such a cartoonish version of a guy working a big city finance job that it's kind of impossible to take him seriously. Maybe that is what the real David was like, but in The Glass Castle, the movie, it just doesn't work at all. There was also a little melodrama every now and then, some moments where you could see where certain scenes were going mere moments after they began. But fortunately, the build in The Glass Castle is just so strong that everything, whether it's predictable or not, it does come together really well. And then getting behind the camera, we've got Brett Pollack, who also shot Short Term 12. And again, he makes you feel like like you're a fly on the wall in the walls as family world, similar to how he shot Short Term 12 to make you feel like you were in that facility with the kids. Cretton also gets to reunite here with his Short Term 12 composer, Joel P. West, and he does a great job here, giving the glass castle some added consistency and direction, which it needed a little bit. So yeah, I wanna love every second of the glass castle just as much as I loved Short Term 12, but 
While Cretton didn't really achieve that, he did earn an ending that had me in tears and it made me call my mom the second the movie ended. I'm gonna give The Glass Castle an eight out of 10. I don't think everyone will take that same thing away from this experience like I did, but it's nice to be in a position where you do get a satisfying conclusion to the main character's story, but you're also engaged and care enough to assess their situation for yourself. And I walked out really moved by the whole thing, but I wanna know now, what did you think? Did you get to see The Glass Castle? Did you also feel the need to call your parents after? Tell me about it in the comments below. I wanna hear about it. And we'll be back real soon with more movie reviews.